Final performer of the evening, <laughs> Reality Changers alumni, Teresa T. Fox Palavox. I've been told I give really basic hugs, <laughs> like really dry, shallow hugs. The first time I heard this, I was surprised. No one has ever critiqued my hug giving abilities, but I guess it was something people had to say about me. The first time someone gave me feedback on my hugs was the first day of college. I was a brand new freshman, lost in the sauce, but oh, so ready to get my education on. <laughs> I saw this girl from the corner of my eye, bright pink shirt, bright pink lipstick, and quinceanera curls. Nobody could miss her. She made sure of it. People should come in with warning signs. I haven't necessarily figured out how to do that, but you know, a tattoo with a caution sign on someone's forehead might be helpful, <laughs> at least for a day one of college. Bubblegum pink chick needed a warning sign. Something like, I have no boundaries, or I hug people without consent. Maybe she was trying to say she was adorable and friendly with all that pink. Maybe her warning sign was like, I'm about to attack you the way my obnoxious pink fairy princess costume just assaulted your eyeball. <laughs> that would have been helpful. When Eva introduced herself, I went in with a handshake and she went straight for the hug. We settled on some sort of weird side hug, shoulder bump, back padding thing. Wow, Eva said as I was pulling away from the side hug. I've never heard someone say wow as negative before, but it was clear that's how she meant it. According to this cotton candy color hugging master, side hugs weren't even hugs. She said that I might as well pit her in the head. I stood there frozen like the Statue of Liberty. Hearing her speech about the rules on hugging, she probably gave me like 20 reasons and lost me at the third. I'm here to get my college degree, not to master hug giving. And also, who is this person rating my hugs anyway? This isn't Yelp. I'm not an Uber driver. I never asked her to rate my hugs. I, ne I never even asked her to give me a damn hug in the first place. I had been on campus for less than 24 hours, and I could already tell this pink panther was going to be trouble. Eva's speech on appropriate greetings wasn't news for me. Contrary to popular belief, not all Mexicans greet that way. Some of us just walk in a, into a family event, raise our fingers to the iconic peace sign to acknowledge and signify our presence. My grandma hates it. She's a sama malcriada, worst of the worst for not wanting to smoosh all over people. I can live with being a malcriada though. For one, you don't exchange or catch possible germs, and two, you can walk right up to the dessert table. I call that winning. Now, you may be thinking, T, what's the big deal? She was just being friendly and wanting a hug Try to be nice. But here's the thing. I don't think hugs are nice. They're invasive, personal, sometimes uninvited, and often not fragrance-free. <laughs> How does someone just go up to a stranger and inspect a hug? That's almost as dangerous as running with bulls. Yes, it's legal and makes some people happy, but makes me miserable. Let me tell you about the one time I went out with Eddie. Eddie was a sweet dude. He had the street hustle and brains just how I liked it. He never talked to me about school or how much homework he had, but every time we met up, his law, schools, his law school books were the only thing decorating the dining table. Eddie was fun and followed my rules about going out. One, don't invite me to do last minute stuff. Two, I need at least five business days to plan something. And lastly, arguably the most important, once he's set, ready to go on my calendar, do not freaking cancel. 
My time is valuable and I got no time to waste. Everything went smooth until he tried to say bye. He claims it was an accident that's, that his hand slipped onto my butt. I remember looking at him like, you know that was a lie. And he smiled knowing damn right the so-called slip was a lie. I wonder if he even thinks that's disrespectful. I bet he doesn't hug his mama like that. At least I hope not. <laughs> Turns out it wasn't just Eddie who feigned confusion and misfired his hands so it landed straight on my back rather. They go in for the full body hug, stay there for three seconds too long, and then accidentally drop their hand, which eventually lands on your ass. It's happened to me at least three times, and I've made a big deal all three times. Every man seems to know this routine. I wonder if, something, I wonder if it's something they teach them in Boy Scouts. Eddie and the bug-grabbing friends weren't the only reason why I dodged hugs like it was my full-time job. I remember being eight years old and actively pretending like I couldn't hear my uncles call me. If you've ever tried understanding a man who's been through several packs of beer, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then I should tell you now, it's not possible. Not too long ago, I figured out I only had four biological uncles. The rest of the 30 plus uncles I, uh, I have are a combination of family, friends, neighbors, my dad's coworkers, and cool people my family likes to party with. As sucky as it was being a kid and having tecate breath excelled on your face, I wouldn't complain, complain at the fact that drunk people can't tell the difference between a $1 bill and a 20. Pleasantly, I would skip to the liquor store and get me some hot Cheetos. I would then come back and be forced by my parents to thank with a hug whoever had sponsored that unhealthy snack. I never had a good experience getting hugs from drunk men. Half of the time, it was a weak shoulder bump, and the other times, I served as a kickstand that prevented them from falling straight on their face. Hugs have always been tied to bad memories for me. I remember it was a Friday night because I, because I fell asleep on the couch. There's something so relaxing about not, having tied, not being tied to an agenda and having a whole season of criminal minds waiting on you. <laughs> on the floor, a rainbow of junk food garbage will sit and I'll try to stay warm with the closest thing there is to a blanket. Sometimes it's a sweater, sometimes it's a pillow, and sometimes there's nothing. So I'll bury my feet in between the cushions to stay warm. Usually, I don't last very long. I'll watch three 60-minute episodes and call it quits. Most times, I convince myself that I'm too tired to walk the 15 feet to my room, so I'll just fall asleep on the couch. That Friday smelled just like any other Friday night. The smell of my neighbor's carne asada grilling entered the kitchen's windows uneven crease. It's how they welcome the weekend all the time. Not too long after I found the perfect napping position, my sleep was interrupted by the beaming light of the energy saving light bulbs in the living room. I struggled to open my left eye. It was tired and it craved sleep. My left eye finally opened fully, followed by the right, left, right, left coordinated like a salsa dancer. As I gained consciousness, I saw a body struggling to move inside the house, wobbly, unbalanced, just like a baby calf right after birth. It was a man bumping into walls and acting like a stranger to the architecture that had been home for a whole decade. Trailing behind him, a petite woman followed, drained and lifeless. My mom was never good at lying. She did this thing with her oval eyes that indicated hurt and disappointment. Unable to keep eye contact, I knew there was something wrong. As I got closer to her, I saw the residue of her dry, salty tears. Stubborn, they hugged her brown cheeks. I wonder if it would have been helpful to say something, but I didn't. By the time I blinked, she had made across the other side of the six-person dining table. 
wrestled the, li wrestled the liquor cabinet and managed to open the 1954 Glacia Soul bottle we had maintained for three generations. My family doesn't know how to deal with hurt. Hurt just happens. And you figure it out. You're going through a bad day, it will pass. You're struggling in school, try harder. My mom stands at a fierce five feet one, curly short hair and a natural shine on her skin. That night she was de desperate for answers and someone to take the hurt away. I got close to her, closer than I've ever been to her, close enough to feel her body heat. My lips pecked her forehead. It tasted salty like the ocean. I wrapped my arms around her tiny body. I heard her heartbeat, each time faster and faster, each beat louder and louder. And I realized it was the first time I felt her. She was delicate and light, so I let go a bit. A combination of saliva and warm tears decorated my shirt, and I hugged my mom tighter. This hug was different. It wasn't unsolicited. It wasn't invasive or dry. There were no ratings involved. She was satisfied, and so was I. Thank you. Give it up for T-Fox and all of our performers tonight.